So for many of you that have been following along on my Twitch streams, you'll have noticed that I've been undergoing this 3k Raider IO challenge for every single Druid spec over the last, well, it's been a few months. It's maybe been like two months that I've kind of been doing it and not really too focused on it necessarily because I've still been trying to push a lot of IO on Feral as my main, but I've definitely been dedicating some time to the three alternative uh, specs of Druid that I play, so Guardian, Resto, and Balance. And I think two days ago, I just hit 3k on every single spec. Resto was the last one that I had to do, and I managed to finish it off. I, it was really clutch. It was the last fortified week. I hadn't done a single fortified key as Resto, and it was the worst possible week to choose to finish it off because it was fortified, bursting, explosive. So it was a lot of healing, a lot of intense uh, kind of management. As a healer, as many of you probably know, explosives are seen as a healer affix. They're seen as a healer's job, and sometimes failing that, a tank's job. So I had my work cut out for me. It was quite intense. I had to, you know, time some 23s and stuff like that in order to hit the IO that I needed, but I managed to do it. So I wanted to talk to you guys about this challenge. I wanted to talk to you guys about my experiences, a lot of things that I learned, the journey that I went on, and, and kind of my experiences of it. Um, so... I'll show you guys a little bit of my Raider IO page now so you can see where everything kind of lies. So obviously my Feral is quite like, you know, significant. My Feral is 3.4k, almost, give or take. Uh, my Tank IO is 3.1, almost. And then my Healer, uh, like Resto and Balance are just barely over the threshold. Uh, you know, a few points over the threshold. Um, so as you can see, I'm like world top 70 tanks for Guardian, which is pretty cool. I'm still trying to aim for 3.3k. So if you are interested in seeing more Guardian Druid uh, play from me, come check out my streams. I'm live Monday to Friday, excluding Thursdays. Uh, but Monday to Friday, like 10 a.m. UK until 6 p.m. UK, roughly. So come check those out because I'm going to be trying to push this up. and I'm going to be trying to push up my Feral IO as well for the last little bit. Um, balance and, and, and Resto, I don't think I'm really going to be playing too much of going, you know, into the future. I think, Fer uh, like, Feral and Guardian I'm going to play a lot of in patch 10.1. Resto and Balance were okay. Like, Balance was, like, quite a big learning curve. Um, Healer was a big learning curve, but, uh, I don't think I'm going to continue them on. I didn't really enjoy them as much. I didn't fall in love with them the same way that I did with Guardian Druid. I, I really actually love the role of tanking now. Um, but I'll get more into that in a second. So uh, I'm top 70 for Druid DPS, which is pretty cool. I've kind of taken my foot off the gas a little bit with like my Feral pushing. I don't have a, a, a team, so I kind of just pug everything. So taking my foot off the gas a little bit with Feral. But I've been enjoying myself a lot. I, and that's been a big focus for me um, recently. It's just like a mental kind of reset. And just like a big positive focus on, on just logging into the game and enjoying what I'm doing and having good experiences um, all throughout my days. So that's what I'm trying to do at the moment and what I'm trying to accomplish. So you can actually see I managed to so so funny story um, I was I was doing some resto keys and I was stuck in Halls of Valor prison for like hours it look you can see on the day I did multiple uh, halves and this is just the ones that we actually t like completed there were like another couple that we did which we just didn't even time and we we got all the way to Odin before we canceled the runs and stuff so. Big time investment. It took like five hours to finally get a run. We've got a 22 holes of valor in time. Shout out to the gamers who managed to do it. Uh, here we go up on screen. Uh, on screen here. Finally managed to do this holes, and I was like, oh yes, okay, I'm done. I'm, I hit 3k resto, and I hadn't. It got us to 2996.7, so I was missing a couple points, and I was like, oh, I've got to do a whole other key. Uh, I go to find another key to do to get us over the 3k threshold, and Smok is doing a 26 knock code. So I sign up to it, and I'm like, I got no business being in 26 knock code. You can see my keys, like, I'm not exactly, like, the biggest gamer healer here. And, uh, he invites me, and we absolutely smashed it out of the park. We did so well in it that I actually gained score for my overall. So now one of my keys, one of my highest keys in the game, is actually on Resto, which is quite funny. Um, obviously I've got 26 as Feral as well, but this one is just sli slightly quicker. Uh, so that's kind of funny. That's kind of cute. You know, that's nice to have. But, um, but yeah, that was kind of the, you know, the overall experience. I mean, something that was quite funny. Uh, in fact, I can kind of go thing through things like one at a time for you now, but I started my challenge out as Balanced Druid. And I initially wanted to try and play some Balanced Druid because I thought, hey, you know what? I want to try and be 
uh, competent in both druid DPS specs because if you play rogue, you play all rogue specs. If you play hunter, you play all of them. If you play mage, you play all of them. Like, it's good to be proficient in your class. So I thought, yeah, you know what? Let me be proficient in feral and balance. I then can then play it if I if I go and do some raiding. Like I at the beginning of the season wanted to commit more to to higher end raiding. So I was like, yeah, I'll get in a good spot. I'll be able to play both um, and be more of an asset to my team. Now. I didn't, that didn't end up working out for me. Like, I didn't end up uh, pursuing that kind of rating as much this season. But I did manage to get 3k IO on balance. And one thing I found, I even got some coaching from, from a friend. One thing that I found when playing balance, like, you can notice my UI, right? I don't really have any any add-ons. I don't really have anything for combat. I don't use anything uh, to track stuff. It's all, all tracked up in here. However, when I play Boomkin... My UI suddenly changes around a little bit. And you'll notice, if you look at the center of the screen here, oh, what's that? Size actually using a weak aura package. And that is because I found that Boomkin really required a lot of, uh, a lot of minor, uh, minor things that you needed to track, which had a big impact on your overall damage and was the reason why I was able to start to get quite good at Boomkin was because of this, this, this weak aura package and because of the coaching that I had and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, I think you could play Boomkin without this weak aura package, but I was on a schedule where I was like, I'm on a deadline, I want to get this done, I want to hit 3k quickly, let's just get good. So I, I got this, but it was really good, it was like, it helped me track like my Rattle, my Star Lord, which are two really important things that you're trying to trace and track as a Boomkin. Um, and then also it tracks like your Dart of Times, which you didn't really use too much for that, your Astral Power, um uh level and your clip state as well which was quite useful tracking the clip state stuff like that was quite nice um so it was it was a decent week or a package to get uh it did definitely help but boomkin was quite cool i do enjoy the gameplay of it it was quite fun but it feels like you have to really play it to like perfection to really um to really do well on it it feels like you can't really half-ass the spec and that's what i struggled with is like I didn't really know what I was doing on it initially, and I really struggled to get it up off the ground, coupled with the fact that when you're doing lower level dungeons and you're trying to learn the spec, Boomkin doesn't really perform well, because during combat um, for, for uh, short bursts of time, right, in lower level keys, and you need you need to be in combat for a long time as Boomkin to ramp up and to get dots on everything, to, to get into your eclipse states and get things rolling, and then hit your incon and have 30 seconds of that, and... It takes a long time to get up and up and move in with Boomkin. Um, so if I found like it only really came alive when I started to do higher level keys. The, the biggest problem for me playing Boomkin was the shift from melee to range that was really hard. Playing on like a quaking week or playing and, you know, trying to deal with various affixes or mechanics. And uh, as range was, was very, very weird, very unique. Um, you know, you do the first pull of Academy. And you've got to dodge the the green goo on the ground and the seeds, the detonating seeds. And you're just constantly moving. And it was really frustrating. And it was really, really quite awkward um, to figure out how to not greed too much with Boomkin. But at the same time, still, um, still trying to do, do as much damage as you can, but also not greed. And that was, that was an interesting challenge. I did enjoy that about, you know, going to, starting to play ranged and stuff. But Boomkin was fun. It was cool. It just wasn't absolutely like game breaking, mind melting for me. It, it was fun. It was okay. Uh, and then we have Guardian. And Guardian, obviously, I said is something that I really wanted to stick with um, going forward and something that I want to continue to play. These are some of my keys here that you can see. So, roughly like some 24s, 23s, and then a couple 25s, and maybe some 22s, 23s on Tyrannical here. Um, Guardian's been really fun. Now, Guardian is something that is very like punishing right or well tank as a whole is a very punishing role because if you make any mistakes then it, the whole run crumbles around you right if you're a healer and you make a mistake sometimes healers can die and the whole group can actually stay alive and you can continue on without the healer until they get back into the run and you can actually do okay you can maybe four, uh, four man bosses or four man a bit of trash and you can actually sometimes be okay with the healer death if a DPS dies, then you've got two other DPS that can pick up the slack, or maybe the healer can weave in their interrupts into the rotation and, and pick up the slack for that player and stuff. So it's okay. it can be okay sometimes if a DPS dies. Um, you might lose a bit of time, but it can be okay. If a tank messes up and they overpull or they wipe or they do something that, or, you know, die, do something that's going to cause a problem, 
for themselves, it's also then going to dramatically have an impact on the group and you're probably going to wipe. And that's why I like to think of tanking as kind of like this Goldilocks. Like you have to be Goldilocks. You have to do the perfect pulse. You have to have the perfect route. You, have, you know, not too hot, not too cold. Um, not too hard, not too soft. You gotta, you gotta have the perfect pulls, perfect route. You gotta pull around the DPS cooldowns. You gotta, you gotta pull around what you're able to uh, CC and interrupt enough of. You gotta pull around the affix week. You gotta pull around like, oh, is it Academy? Okay, well on Tyrannical, you wanna go Veximus. On uh, Fortified, maybe you wanna go um, the the tree area, right? The ancient, the overgrown ancient. So you have a lot of deviations that you have to do as tank and. You're really trying to min-max uh, the the player's tank, and I found that really fun. I found it really interesting. Like I found as a tank, I was so much better learning tank when I was already like 3.2k, 3.3k IO on Feral before I even began tanking this season. So I knew like every dungeon, every strat, every route, every different week like change. I knew it all, and um, it was really enjoyable picking up tank. Going into, like, I mean, if you look at some of my keys, I mean, let's say, like, Algathar, for example. Okay, I've done a few. Okay, so I actually do... A, I, thing about tanking is I actually help my friends out. So these 16s and 17s, this is where I play with my friends. Um, some IRL friends. And, like, this would be, like, CC Lemon and... Yeah, CC Lemon and, and Greg and stuff like that. So these are some IRL friends, and I help them out. So any of these, like, 17s is just me helping out the, the buddies. But generally speaking, like... Yeah, see, look, look at this, for example. I went into a ruby for a plus 10 with some friends, I imagine. Yep, with some friends. And then immediately my next is a 22-2 chest. This is a really good example of where I just, like, stepped up to the plate and I just immediately executed on things I'd seen other tanks do. And it was really fun going from a DPS role into a tanking role. Going, oh, man, I really want these tanks. I wish these tanks would pull around, like, would pull the way I want them to. And so I, I wanted to be the tank that would pull and the pull the way that the DPS would really go, oh, this tank's going to be good. And I also wanted to limit test what Guardian was capable of. And I am still willing to do that. So yesterday I did a Shadow Moon Tyrannical 25. And we timed it. But it was with this group here. And I wanted to try and do a first pull. So I wanted to try and do this. I wanted to try and pull this pack of mobs here. This pack of mobs here onto the first boss. And then lust it and then kill them. Now we ended up failing. We ended up wiping. But it was a good old effort. And you know what? If I was a paladin, we probably would have been able to do it. But it's something that I wanted to try. And it's like, I want to try and limit test and say, hey, like Guardian can be good. You can play these other tanks and it'll still be okay. Um, and Guardian as a whole has been really strong, really sturdy. A lot of people going into the challenge, I was thinking, oh, this spec is going to fall over. But no, it was actually really sturdy, really strong. I was able to do pulls just like a tank or warrior would have been able to do. Now, doing those kinds of pulls on a 22, 23, 24, yeah, it's fine. I understand why people might not be able to do that on a Guardian at, say, 27s, 28s, that kind of thing, where it's really at the top echelon of, uh, of tanks. But it was really fun, and it's been really fun to play Guardian and, and limit test and try and be the, the tank that you'd always want in your group and stuff. And I've had a lot of success. People say, like, they're really happy with my tanking, and it's really enjoyable. It's really, really fun. I definitely recommend getting into tanking. Um and checking out guardian now in terms of resto to finish this off briefly so resto as i mentioned did the 26 not good which was cool uh, was in holes prison for a while um all my like keys this week like all my all these these keys these fortifieds like i had no experience in fortified on these keys like i just kind of did one time and go look yeah like a 22 bam algathar yeah my only fortified was a 23 in time like i i didn't i just had to I saved it all for the last week, the last week of Fortified of the season. Um, so it was really fulfilling doing it on Resto. I'll be honest, I think Resto was the hardest role to do. Um, okay, so it was the easiest role in the beginning when you're doing like, I don't know, plus 17s, plus 18s, whatever. It's like super easy, it's super boring. And then you get into like 22s. Okay, no, 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 sorry. You, you do like plus 10s and 12s and stuff like that, and it's like super, super easy. Then you get into stuff like 18s, 19s. The bit where you actually have to do some kind of CC control, and people don't, which makes your job way harder, and people are dying and stuff of preventable things, and it just makes you, you're, you're constantly just like overhealing all the time, and it's like quite hard. 
And then you get into like 24s. And like that 26 not good was probably the easiest key I did. Hands down is the easiest key. You know why? Because I was playing with a really good group. Um, so it's like, yeah, this is so easy as a healer. So it was like really easy, really hard, really easy again. Um, which is an interesting dynamic with healing. And as a healer, your job gets easier the better the people in your group are. So I think as you go higher up, healing gets easier. And then there's probably a ceiling where it then becomes really hard again. Like when you're doing, say, 28, like, I don't know, 28 tyrannical RLP or something. It's probably really, really excruciatingly hard for a healer. Um, but it was... Uh, Re Resto was Resto was fun. I used to be a Resto main back in the day. And, like, it was it was fun to play. But um, definitely not something that I really want to pick up again. It was cool to do this challenge. But I don't think I'd really want to play it again. Uh, and that kind of brings me to my next point in terms of ranking. What was the hardest thing to do with each of these? So I think tanking was the most responsibility. But it actually wasn't that hard to hit 3k as tank. It was actually quite easy. But I think the reason it was quite easy for me was because I already had ingrained knowledge from my previous experience as a DPS. So tanking wasn't too hard. It was a little bit of limit testing and understanding like, right, do I need to box skin this tank hit on this boss on this level of key? on fortified or tyrannical or like maybe i don't need to or like where am I, where am i gonna be most scared in this pull and there's like little things that you have to learn say like in halls of valor if you do a halls of valor there's certain mobs that you have to kite away so if you're doing like th this pull and you have any shield maidens you have to slowly kite because of the mortal hue and the break armor you have to slowly kite them around um so there's like little things that you have to learn as a tank but nothing too like strenuous that was that was too hard. So I'd say tanking was the easiest one. I would then say that Boomkin was like second easiest. I had to learn Boomkin and learn ranged, but it wasn't actually hard because there was keys where you can just get carried in DPS. Like for a 22 key, 23 key, you you can get carried in DPS and it can be okay. So it wasn't actually too hard to play Boomkin and to to get 3k. Um, but it did need to, to play it well. I needed a weak aura package and yeah, I needed to adjust to playing range. In terms of resto, again, I don't want to say that healing was the hardest role. It probably was. But I definitely have more respect for healers. Like, during this process, I had no respect for healers. Then I suddenly had immense respect for healers. And then I had no respect for healers again. Um, because it ebbs and flows with healing. But I, I do, I genuinely do. I respect healers now a lot more. I can understand the struggles that they have to go through when people aren't using their abilities. They're not CCing. They're not interrupting. Spells are going through. Casts are going through. Yeah, it it, it was it was hard. Resto was hard. It, it was. Um, but it was good fun. It was good. It was a good challenge. It was good fun. And uh, yeah, I definitely recommend you guys should try this out. I know this is a really long video. But uh, I just wanted to kind of talk and just give you my overall feelings on, on how this was. It was a really fun challenge trying to hit 3k on everything. I think that you guys should try it out. I learned a lot. Going into the next patch, I'm going to have a lot more awareness of healer roles, tank role, DPS. Like, what people are, like the way that people are thinking. The way, like, what people are probably going to be doing. Um, and how each role can be complemented by other roles, you know. So, I'll be thinking about that. I think it's definitely made me a better player, and it was really fun. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.